Lithium niobate is an artificial material first produced in 1949. Australian scientists are now looking at ways this important material can be used in photonics for applications from space navigation to farming. The material lithium niobate um, was first discovered quite a while ago, maybe 70 years or so. Recently, um, it was possible to, to get wafers with very high quality and thin films, which makes it very attractive for uh, semiconductor industry so that one can use all the technology that was developed. And what is particularly interesting about lithium niobate is the, that it has very interesting material properties that can change the color of light very efficiently and manipulate the light. Silicon uh, as a material is, is what sort of powers our laptops and smartphones, and this is why Silicon Valley is called Silicon Valley. So a lot of the technology has emerged around silicon, and the community, the the electronics community, certainly, you know, it, it's all about silicon. The photonics community has also been look, following silicon, assuming that that okay, we will need to use the same platform. Silicon can do a lot. But it can't do everything. You know, for example, you hold up a piece of silicon, it's black, you can't see through it. Um, so if you need to work with visible light, silicon can't do it for you. Lithium niobate covers a much broader range of the spectrum than, than silicon can. It's transparent and visible, um, but it's also transparent into the sort of mid infrared and can also interact perhaps better with, you know, converting electronic signals into optical signals. But the advancement that's happened recently is that you can actually treat lithium niobate to some extent the same way that you treat silicon. So you can start imagining using the same sort of technology that's been used to make integrated circuits in silicon for making integrated circuits on lithium niobate. And that, I think, is the, 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 real, the really new thing here. Lithium niobate, at the very early days of the internet, lithium niobate was the material that was used... Um, to interface uh, electronic information to the optical fiber network but you know you had one device that was a you know a block of of, of lithium niobate you know five centimeters long that took an electronic signal and fibers on either end and sent sent the light through so it wasn't an integrated circuit it was like one one component the the new thing is having these uh, integrated circuits and the, the contribution we're making is really looking at trying to build up the toolbox of components that you can integrate together onto integrated circuits so that you can put all of the elements that you might find in a laboratory or, you know, in a rack of uh, uh, equipment and integrate that together. And there's, there's quite, you know, a lot of different components that you need in photonics, which is probably a little bit different to electronics. In electronics, everything's made of transistors. In photonics, you need you know, all sorts of weird and wonderful components to actually make a circuit. What we're, what we're doing is trying to make as complete a toolbox as possible of components you can just print onto these um, lithium niobate chips. We've all heard of electronics. We vaguely know that it's what makes our devices work through the sending of electrical signals. Photonics is like that, but using light particles instead of electrons. So I guess in, in electronics, one has um, electrons that, that go down, for example, wires or in, in a semiconductor circuit, more or less along the conductive lines, which can then be switched on and off, so, so manipulated into ones and zeros. In, in photonics, it, it's quite similar. Just instead of having electrons, one has light particles, and they are called photons. Here, we, we are more or less uh, guiding light um, into these uh, waveguides or you're probably familiar with uh, the NBN and all the fiber connections that are used to uh, build a, a vast network across uh, Australia to, to speed up um, our internet. We are doing the same, just uh, instead of using optical fibers, we are trying to integrate these optical waveguides on, on the semiconductor chips. And because we use, instead of uh, glass, we use this lithium niobate, it has uh, vast more functionalities. While all of this is very cool, what's the point of using photons instead of electrons? If you think about um, your mobile phone um, or Wi-Fi, the frequency that your Wi-Fi works at is that's electronic, so or, or microwave. It's about five gigahertz. So light it, it oscillates much much faster. 
So light, light, okay, the frequency, okay, five gigahertz, you know, that's five um, billion oscillations a second, you know, which is a lot. But um, uh, light is 170 terahertz, which is 170 million, million uh, oscillations a second. And so, you, you know, the, the capacity for information scales similarly. So you can get, you can get an awful lot more information carried by an optical signal. At some point, it probably started as an electronic signal. And at some point, it will end up as an electronic signal. Not always. There, there are some applications where the information is actually coming directly to us um, as an optical signal. Uh, or, you know, when we're, when we're doing visualisation, like if you're, if you're trying to actually sort of create an image, the, the, the information is actually arriving as an optical signal. So lithium niobate can help us with those. But, it, but in the communication system, it's, it's, you know, it's a computer talking to another computer and they're inherently electronic. And all of this is happening with lithium niobate here in Australia? Particularly Australian industry, but I think industry in general kind of assumes that integrated circuits are, you know, these sort of inaccessible technologies that happen overseas somewhere in a, you know, a giant multi-billion dollar uh, factory that you, you just can't get into. I guess what we're, we're exploring is with lithium niobate, the the ability to make chips with it is perhaps a little easier than it is to make with make silicon chips and it's more flexible so you can do a lot more different things with it and so you can you can engage with industries that have niche requirements or unusual needs and pro- possibly high value modest volume manufacturing requirements um, and you know and, and again this navigation system is a really good example of that where you know okay they need this real precision in in the navigation system and depending on what they're doing you know okay if you're if you're making a moon rover you're not going to need that many moon rovers uh, but you know similar technology could be used in autonomous vehicles and you know so you want to be able to scale one day to something that could be you know many millions of, of components and so lithium niobate's a nice platform because you can actually make a few integrated circuits using our technology and then scale it uh, using some of the same sorts of technology that are used for silicon to actual mass, mass manufacture and i think I think that trajectory is important for Australia because in Australia, if you're in industry, you're not going to start making millions of components. You're going to start start with a few niche components for niche things and then grow. 